Singer transitions have gotten pretty popular lately. Those are the fancy animated transitions that you sometimes see in people's streams whenever they're switching between scenes in OBS. Well, the latest version of OBS just made singer transitions even better by allowing you to add what's known as a track mat. Check this out. Here's a normal stinger transition. Now here's a stinger transition with a track mat. Can you guys see the difference? See, the first one was just a basic animation that fills up the whole screen to cover up what's essentially just a normal scene switch. Whereas for the second one, you can actually see parts of both scenes at the same time during the animation. It's really cool, it's a really subtle effect, but it's really awesome. I'm gonna show you how to make your own track mat transition, and we're gonna be doing it without having to pay for shit that you don't wanna pay for, because let's be real, you guys are streamers, you don't have any money. If you guys are offended that I said you guys don't have any money, don't worry, I also don't have any money. And that's why this video is sponsored by Nerd or Die. Nerd or Die is a place where you can get overlays, alerts, panels, all sorts of designs for streams. Y you get it, okay? I talk about them all the time. But they now even have track mat transitions. So here's the good news. If this video just sucks and is like too hard to follow, Nerd or Die has a bunch of free track mat transitions that you can just download. And I'll show you guys how to actually set them up later in the video. Now, if you're feeling really fancy, they have some nicer premium ones that you can buy. And if you use my code NUTTY at checkout, you'll get 15% off on your order. By the way, that code works for everything on their website. And they got a lot of really cool stuff there. In fact, they just released their new fireworks stream alerts package. So you can make things like emotes and images pop up and explode all over you. I made that sound really weird, but it's really cool. So head on over to Nerd or Die and upgrade your stream today. All right, so we're gonna keep it real simple today. We're gonna be making this animated transition. It could be your logo, your face, any shape that you want it to be. And we're gonna have it start in the middle of the screen and then grow until it fills the whole screen. So the key to making a transition that looks like this is a video file that you're gonna make yourself. And that video file will look something similar to this one right here. We're gonna be feeding OBS a video file that's formatted just like this one. So what's going on here? You'll notice that this is a single video file, but it's super wide and there's a reason for that. On the left hand side, you'll see what looks like a normal stinger transition. By the way, if you got this far into the video and you don't know what a stinger transition is, I made a video talking about it so you could probably watch that tutorial up here. But it's just a normal stinger transition that you're probably used to. This is what your viewers are actually gonna be seeing. But the key is what's going on on the right side. That's gonna be our track mat. So what is this actually doing? Let's say we're doing a scene transition from scene A into scene B. Well, the track mat is going to tell OBS which parts of the animation are going to contain scene A and which parts are going to contain scene B. That's going to be represented as a black and white image where the black parts represent scene A and then the white parts represent scene B. That's all we need to do. But the interesting part about all this is the stinger and the track mat needs to be baked into the same video file. That's why our video is super wide. Later on, when we actually put this video file into OBS, OBS will split the video in half for us and figure out which part is gonna be the stinger and which part's gonna be the track mat. To keep this video really simple, we're gonna skip the stinger transition part, but if you wanna make a stinger for this, you can. But for our purposes, we're just gonna make this transition. And to make this transition, all we need to do is make that super wide video file. And the left side is gonna be completely blank because we're not gonna have a stinger. And then the right side is gonna contain our track mat. So with that said, what are we gonna be needing to make this transition? First, we're gonna be needing some kind of software to make our logo. And for that, I'm gonna be using Inkscape. And second, we need something to make the actual animation. And for that, I'm gonna be using HitFilm Express. Look, I get it. I know you can also use DaVinci Resolve. Okay, Timmy, relax. Okay, we know that Resolve's like the second coming of Jesus. You can stop telling us. You can, of course, substitute these programs with whatever you want. I just chose these because they're easy to use and it doesn't cost you guys anything. I'll leave a Zelda down below for all the programs you'll need, but make sure for HitFilm Express that you make a free account and then sign in in the program. Otherwise, everything you make is gonna have a watermark. All right, let's begin. Let's start by making our logo. So I'm gonna be really light on details here because number one, I don't wanna put any more effort than I really have to. And number two, you can pretty much make whatever you want. For me, I wanted to make something really strong and really powerful. And what's more powerful than Oprah? So I found this picture of Oprah on Google and just pasted it right into Inkscape. Then I selected the curve tool and just traced around her face to cut it out. This part took me a while and I'm sure there's a much easier way of doing this, or at least 
That's what I'm gonna tell you guys so it doesn't look like I don't know what I'm doing. But basically, just keep tracing around your head and then once you get to the end, make sure you connect both ends of the line. Then you can go ahead and just delete Oprah because we're not gonna be needing her anymore. Now you can press Control Shift R. That's going to automatically adjust the size of the canvas to the size of our outline. And then head over to the Fill and Stroke panel. Under the Fill tab, we're gonna set the fill to white and then go over to the Stroke tab and we're just gonna click on the X to remove the stroke. The stroke is just the outline and we don't want that. It's gonna look like our shape disappeared. Don't worry about it. It's just because our background is white. When we actually do the export, the background will be transparent. Finally, head on over to the export tab and export the file to wherever you want. This is what the final result should look like. Here comes the fun part, the animation. Open up HitFilm Express and create a new project. Make sure that when you're setting the resolution of your timeline that you make the width twice the length of your canvas because remember, we need to make room for both the stinger and the track mat. Regardless of whether you're actually gonna have the stinger or not, you need to make it twice the length. In your new project, you wanna drag Oprah into our media pool, and then we're gonna change the background to checkerboard. This is just gonna make it a lot easier to see what we're actually doing. So here's our super wide canvas. What I want you to do is just mentally split this thing right down in the middle and imagine the left-hand side, which would contain our animation for our stinger, but since we don't wanna have an animation for our one, this side is gonna be completely blank in our final export. We're only interested in creating the track mat, so click on new and create a new plane. This is gonna serve as the background for our track mat. Leave the colors black, but make sure to change the resolution to 1920 by 1080, or whatever the final resolution of our animation is gonna be. Then drag the plane over to your timeline. It's gonna ask you if you wanna change your editor sequence settings, just click no. Now, because our track mat is going to be on the right side of our final export, we're gonna drag the plane all the way to the right side of our canvas. I do this by setting the position to 960 on the X axis. And then adjust the length to be whatever you want your animation to be. I'm gonna make mine one second, so I'll move the playhead to one second. Press Control Shift D to cut it and just delete the excess. Now just right click on your plane and click Make Composite Shot. This is where we're gonna be doing all of our animating. Then you're gonna drag Oprah on top of the black plane so you'll have the black background with a white Oprah on on top of it. You know what I mean. So what we wanna do is we wanna animate our logo so that it starts off small and then grows to fill full screen. And the way to do that is to animate this scale property. So the scale property is going to tell you how big our logo is. If we click on this button here, this is gonna turn on keyframing for the scale property. Now, if you don't know what keyframing is, I explained more about it in the other Stinger transition I did. I'll leave a link to that up here. But basically what keyframing allows us to do is to set key points in our animation. So for example, let's say at the start of the animation we want our logo to be 0% in size and then at the end of the animation we want it to be 100% in size. Well then what we do is we create a keyframe at the start of the animation and then another keyframe at the end of the animation and then HitFilm Express is going to figure out how to animate the logo in between those keyframes. Sounds a bit weird, but just watch what we do here. We're gonna leave our playhead at the beginning of the animation, and then we're gonna adjust the scale to 0%. Now you're gonna see a diamond on the timeline. The diamond represents the first keyframe. Then we'll move the playhead to the end of the animation, and this time we're gonna adjust the scale property, and we're gonna increase it until Oprah is just filling up the entire screen. You're gonna see that it's gonna add another diamond to your timeline. This is another key Frame. So now if you just drag your playhead over the timeline, you're gonna see that our logo is now animated. So we're pretty much done, but I wanna tweak this a little bit because the animation is, well, it's a little bit boring. We can make it a little bit more exciting. If you head on over to the value graph tab, this is where you can adjust the speed of the animation because right now the animation is pretty boring. It just grows at a consistent speed and it can be, it can use some work. I'm gonna highlight the first keyframe and then click on this circle and then highlight the other keyframe and then click in the circle again. This is just gonna add some acceleration and deceleration to our animation. So it's gonna start off slow and then increase in speed. And then as it reaches the end, it's gonna decrease in speed. So it's just gonna make the animation a little bit more interesting. Okay, so animation is done. Now it's time to export this thing. It's gonna be a little bit tricky because we need to export this while maintaining transparency. So you can't just export as an MP4 file because MP4 files don't have transparency in them. And so the whole background is just gonna be black. We 
don't want it to be black. The best way I found to do that is to go to the export tab and set the preset to uncompressed AVI with alpha. And then you can click export, export now, content, it's gonna export your file, and then navigate to where your file is saved, and you're gonna see this big app ah! file. Can I say ah! on YouTube? So to do this, we're going to convert this video into WebM format. It's gonna be much, much smaller, and it's gonna be way easier for OBS to actually play back in your stream. I couldn't really find like a good WebM converter that was like really simple to use, so I decided to make my own script for it. I'll leave a Ganondorf down below to where you can download it. It's really easy to set up. You just unzip it to wherever you want, and then you take your really big AVI file and drag it over the bat file. It's just gonna churn through it. It's gonna take a couple seconds, and then it's gonna spit out a much smaller WebM file. But yeah, you can double click on your newly created video, and you should see your animation playing there. All right, so finally, we can add our track mat transition into OBS. So go into your scene transitions dock, click in the drop down, and then click on add stinger. In the properties dialog, select the WebM file that you just created. And then if you click on preview transition, it's not gonna work. Slow down homing, you're going too fast. Make sure that you select use a track mat. This is gonna tell OBS that the video file that you inputted has a track mat. Under layout in the drop down box, leave it by default. It should say same file side by side. You can also do same file stacked. It just means that when you're creating the video file, instead of putting the stinger and the track mat side by side, you just put it vertically stacked on top of each other. Either way, click OK, and now you should have your fancy new Oprah transition that you've always wanted. You're welcome. Now, let's just say that you hate Oprah. I would say, Guess who's not getting a car this Christmas? You can try out Nerdardize free track mat transition pack. Again, the tingle is down below in the description. Inside, you'll see a folder that says OBS 27 side by side. And you'll see a bunch of video files that are similar to the one that we made in this video. You just need to add them to OBS in the same way that we did for our Oprah transition. So there you go. There's a simple and easy custom made track mat transition for you guys. Guys, I hope this video has been helpful for you. If you guys need some pointers for making your own transition, or really just anything to do with streaming, make sure to join the Discord. Link is in the description box down below. Also, come follow me on Twitch. I stream three nights a week and we're trying to hit Twitch affiliate. So really help me out if you guys came over. Come, come by. Say hello. Say anything. Anything you want. I'll catch you guys next week. Good night, everyone. Or good morning. I don't know where you live. It could be daytime. Who knows?